Before we start, I just realized here, I made a small, uh, there's a small mistake here. Please correct it in your notes, okay? Here we don't have a beta dot. This is just alpha dot, alpha dot and Q, which, is, which are kind of the variables in the longitudinal direction, okay? Alpha dot and Q. For the lateral ones, basically, uh, I mean, yeah, the beta dot, P and R, the non-dimensionalization is like this, V0 divided by B, or um, there's a 2 here too, it's missing, 2U0 divided by B, okay? And B being the, um, the, 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 the span, okay? So this would be P hat and this would be R hat, okay? Please correct this in your notes. So beta dot is not here, obviously, right? For the longitudinal, it's alpha dot and Q, and for the lateral, it's beta dot, P and R. And this is chord and this is span. One more thing someone asked me during the break, which is a very good question, which is how about non-dimensionalizing the angles, alpha, beta, you know, even if you want to non-dimensionalize, say, theta or some of these angles. How do you, do you non-dimensionalize angles? Well, if you use these angles as a radians, it's already non-dimensionalized. It's already non-dimensional. Radi radian is non-dimensionalized with 2 pi, right? It's already non-dimensional. So alphas and betas, the angles, you don't really need to non-dimensionalize again if you use radians as the variable, uh, the, the unit, okay? Make sense? Good. Is this fine? Did everybody write this? Please have it in your notes. Okay, so. So we are finally at longitudinal static stability. So we are looking at static stability. We are now not looking at the dynamic stability anymore. We are looking at static stability, okay? So, the most important thing Right? I mean, the most important partial derivative is, as I mentioned, we already looked at CM alpha. And CM alpha, we said, must be less than zero. We established that in the previous hour. Okay? So, which means, if I would need to plot a graph that is alpha versus CM, Okay, what can I, what do I know about this graph if I would like to plot this? Let's start at the trim point. What should be CM at the trim point? It should be zero, right? The moment, the pitching moment in trim must be zero. All moments are equal to zero. So if this is the zero point here, if this is the zero CM point, then in trim, and the airplane is probably trimmed at some alpha. I don't know, this is probably the alpha trim point. Because the air, airplane will have a positive alpha, right? Hopefully, when you're in trimmed flight, isn't it? So you will have an alpha trim, let's say 10 degrees, 5 degrees, 3 degrees, I don't know, so it's an alpha trim. And at that point, CM must be equal to zero, that's for sure. Is that right? Okay. If I have, from the trim point, if I have for some reason a bigger alpha, if there's a gust, alpha becomes a larger number, it moves over here. Let's say alpha moves over here for some reason, and we, wanna, we want it to come back. Should this be now a positive moment or a negative moment? Negative moment, right? We established it in the previous hour. So it should be somewhere here. So it should be a negative moment. So we are talking of a point over here. How about if the moment, if the alpha, if there's a disturbance in alpha and it's a negative disturbance, I mean in the opposite way. Should I now have a positive moment or a negative moment? I should have a positive moment, so it should be somewhere here, right? Okay. 
So since this is a partial derivative, CM, del CM alpha, right? This is del CM del alpha. Since it's a partial derivative, we are really looking at the slope. And we said the slope must be negative. And here's the slope. This is the negative slope, right? It is a negative slope between CM and alpha. It goes through the trim point here. This is the trim point. It goes through the trim point, alpha trim, and it has a negative slope. Does it make sense? So del CM alpha is that negative slope in the partial, in, a, in, a, in a, of course, this is again calculated at the trim point, right? These partial derivatives are calculated at the trim point. So at the trim point, at this little tiny place here, this should be a negative number. And it is a negative slope now. So if I would, if I would assume the airplane to be linear around what, whatever this is here, so if you would expand this, you would see something like that. Right? And now this graph is not enough, so it should look like that. And this should be your CM alpha graph for a fixed link airplane if you want to have longitudinal static stability. I mean, the other part, I mean, there's no other option for this. It should look like that. Let me plot this clear, uh, nicely. I don't, I don't really like the way it's plotted right now. Let's make it a big graph. Alpha, and that's CM, okay? So this one here is the trim point. It's alpha trim. And the relation between CM alpha should look like that. And this slope here, that is del CM del alpha, and that should be less than zero, that slope. And alpha here is a positive number, right? Because you need positive alpha to trim. You might, you, alpha is not here. And, and this is here, the zero moment point, and you have zero moment at alpha trim, and you have, which also means that for zero alpha, you have a positive pitching moment, okay? We call this CM0, and that CM0 must be positive. At alpha zero, the airplane must produce a positive moment. Otherwise, you cannot plot this graph. Okay? For instance, look at this. Let's say this is alpha and this is CM. And let's say at zero alpha, CM is negative. Okay, this is CM0. Let's say it is negative. So how are we going to do this? I mean, you, you might need to do this in order to keep alpha trim here in forward flight. But the problem here would be that you will have CM alpha to be positive. And that would make it immediately unstable, right? If CM0 would be negative. Or let's do it like that. So now this would be alpha trim. And that would be CM0. And here CM alpha is less than zero in this graph. Is it less than zero? Yes. CM0 is negative, yes, but the alpha trim is negative. And this is typically, that can't happen for airplanes. You need positive alpha to create lift, right? So this can't happen. I mean, st it looks statically stable here. This looks statically stable. CM alpha is less than zero, and everything looks statically stable. However, the alpha trim is a negative number. So you can't really do that, right? You, you will not produce lift. You will not be able to fly. Here this looks fine, but CM0 is negative, 
and therefore you have this positive CM alpha and this is statically unstable but you have zero moment at alpha trim which is good. So which means you have an equilibrium point but it's unstable. Now this here is the best solution now. We have alpha trim that's positive, that's good. Right? At the same time CM alpha is positive, uh, is negative, so this gives me static stability. But if I say this, then at zero alpha, then CM zero must be positive, which means if I have an airplane, if I have an airplane with zero alpha, V infinity and alpha is equal to zero. You should have at alpha equals zero, you must have a positive moment for static stability. So how did I come to that conclusion? Do you understand how I came to that conclusion? Let me stand up here for a second. I came to that conclusion based on this graph. I need to have CM alpha less than zero. I need to have a positive alpha in trim which means when CM is equal to zero. So if I plot this graph here like that, that, which means that when alpha is equal to zero, I need to have a positive moment. Why do I say positive? It is still the body moment. <coughs> M is still the moment around the um, body fixed coordinate systems, right? It's, it's the moment around the body y-axis. So if, if this is the airplane, you take your side, and this is a positive moment now. Right? In the, in, the, in the y direction. So it's a positive moment. You need a positive moment if alpha is, is equal to zero. So for static stability, I need CM alpha less than zero, but there's one more thing. I need CM zero to be greater than zero as well, which means when alpha is equal to zero, I need a positive moment. I need two conditions. One is not enough. Because if you look at this condition here, this has also CM alpha less than zero. You see? But you cannot really fly because alpha is negative. You could say there are two conditions. Alpha must be positive in trim and CM alpha must be less than zero. So you have two conditions. But instead of saying alpha trim must be positive, it is equivalent to say CM zero must be greater than zero, which means when alpha is equal to zero, I need a positive moment. It's the same thing, right? So this one wouldn't work because alpha trim is negative. Do you understand that? So for static stability in terms of alpha, I really need two conditions. One is this, and the other one is that. So these two conditions. If you have these two conditions, you will have static stability in the longitudinal direction. Any questions here? This is, this is quite fundamental. If you're building an airplane, the first thing you really check, if you, if you look at stability, is CM alpha. CM alpha has to be negative. And you need a positive moment when alpha is equal to zero. If you don't have these two conditions, you have an unstable airplane or you cannot fly. Okay? Do you understand that? If you have any questions, please ask me. This is important. If you're an aerospace engineer, you should know about CM alpha. We made the definition for M, the moment, pitching moment. It is the body fixed coordinate system moment M. We made definitions for alpha. Alpha is the projection of V infinity onto the symmetric plane, blah, blah, right? We made definition what a partial derivative is, del M del alpha. It's the change of moment because of alpha. And then we made definitions for the non-dimensionalization. So CM alpha is a non-dimensional partial derivative. Make sense? Any questions? Okay. All right, so two conditions. We need CM0 is 0, and CM0 is the non-dimensional pitching moment
at alpha equals zero. Okay. And CM alpha to be less than zero for longitudinal static stability. Okay. And these are the two things that we shouldn't really forget what we have. And CM0 is the non-dimensional pitching moment at alpha equals zero. Is that okay? Okay. Now here comes the real fun part. Here comes the fun part. Let's have it here on the screen so that we don't forget these two conditions. So, let's look at an airfoil. Okay, let's look at an airfoil cross section. Let's look at an airfoil. This is a nice cambered airfoil. Okay, take another airfoil. Let's make it a symmetric airfoil. And let's make it a negative, an airfoil with a negative camber. Okay. Let's say this is no camber, so it is symmetric. Let's make this positive camber. Positive camber, and this is a negative camber. So. Let's look at these airfoils, okay? Positive camber is basically that, right? You have, a, you have a curved thing, this is a straight line, and this one will have a negative camber. So this is that. All right. So, what I'm going to look at now is I'm going to give a V infinity onto those things with alpha equals zero. Alpha equals zero. What happens then? And we are going to measure, we are going to measure the moment that will be generated. E infinity, alpha equals zero. So, calculate the moment. So put it into a wind tunnel. Basically, take an airfoil, all right, give alpha equals zero, give a, give a alpha equals zero, and since this is a symmetric airfoil, the airflow will be like that, you know, and you will have a nice airflow, will look like this. Okay. So at alpha equals zero, V infinity, no camber, symmetric. And let's say you have, here you have the CG. Let's say. What would be the moment at alpha equals zero for a symmetric airplane, uh, an airfoil? You would probably find zero, right? <laughs> CM zero will be equal to zero. According to this, would that be enough to fly or have static stability? in the longitudinal direction. Not really, is it? It won't be, right? Is it enough or not? Are you sleeping or is it just me? Or you, 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 did I totally lose you or you're sleepy? Okay, so CM0 is less than zero. Now, if you would, if you would put a cambered airfoil into the, into the wind tunnel, you would obtain something like that, CM0 less than zero. If you put a negative cambered airfoil, you would find CM0 greater than zero. So, which one would you put 
onto your air into your airplane out of these three for static stability. First one, it's negative. Which one would you put? This one? This one? Yeah, yeah. It must be positive, but it's negative. It is negative. <laughs> Am I in the right class? <laughs> Must be all a dream. This is negative, understand? And this is positive. So, which one would you put on your airplane if you want static stability? This one. <laughs> Why not this one? CM0 is positive. What's the problem with this? Why don't you put this one? You don't like this shape or what? Why, why, what's the problem with this shape? You don't think this will create lift, huh? It creates lift if you have enough angle of attack. So if, if you had something like that, and let's say, this is your chord line, this is V infinity, and you have an alpha, it will create some lift and it will also create some drag. So this would have been a better choice for my wing if I want to sit on it and fly. But airplanes don't fly with this. Why not? Yes, please. Since we, we, we are not taking all the wings mm -hmm. for aircraft, mm -hmm. uh, we should take uh, all aircraft CMZ. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what he's saying is that we are uh, checking the whole airplane. It's not only the airplane or it's not only the wing. It's not only that airfoil. You are right. We are checking the whole airplane. But my question is, why don't you like this airfoil? Uh-huh. And? and more, more drag. Okay, so aerodynamically, in order to create lift, this is not the best choice. Because the, the characteristics, the aerodynamic characteristics are not very nice which basically, uh, what I would like to say is that it creates more drag at higher angle of attacks, the stall properties are not very good, the lift generation is not that great, and in fact at zero alpha it might even create l a negative lift, right? So this is, this is not the best choice, although you would be able to fly with this and you would probably have better s characteristics. So the one we really like is of course the positive camber, because at zero alpha it creates lift, and at nice small angle of attacks you get more lift and the lift to drag ratio is a lot better for a positive camber therefore we would like to have a positive cambered airfoil for our wings so that's for sure so we definitely want to have a positively cambered airfoil for our wings okay and but the whole airplane so if I look at the whole airplane uh, this is, let's say, this is my whole airplane. Still, and let's say this is my CG. I'm just making this up now, okay, this position. Let's, let's have the CG somewhere here for the whole airplane. We still need a positive or negative moment. We need a positive moment at alpha equals zero. V infinity, alpha equals zero. I still need a positive moment, right? I still need a positive moment at alpha equals zero for the whole airplane, okay? But the wing itself will give me what? A negative moment. So it will look like this. That is the CM0, the, 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 the moment zero, or CM0, that I will get for alpha equals zero. But for the whole airplane, I need a positive one around the CG. So what should I do? I should create, I do, should do something that will give for the whole airplane a positive moment at alpha equals zero. What can I do? How do I get a positive moment? I can put another wing at the bag that will somehow create a positive moment when alpha is equal to zero. 
and that would be so that this will push down, let's say I have a force that pushes it down from the tail, and given that distance here, multiplied with this distance, you would create a really big force. And it will give you a positive moment. And if you add it with CM0, you will hopefully get a really big moment, CM0, for the whole airplane. Okay. You maybe don't see it very well. Let me put it like that. See a positive CM0 for the whole airplane, but because you have a horizontal tail, so the whole airplane will now have a positive CM0 because of this, and now we are fine. Now you have an airfoil that uses a positive camber, has a nice lift to drag ratios, okay? But at the same time, at alpha equals zero, we still produce a positive CM0 and we can satisfy this. And that's why I have a horizontal tail on every airplane. If you use that. Or if you use that, it's the same, right? If you use that, you will have zero moment coming from the wing, but you need a, still a positive moment, so you still need a vertical tail, a uh, horizontal tail. You need a, something at the back that will give you that positive moment when alpha is equal to zero. That okay? Any questions? Of course the question is, why not have this wing at the front? Let's do it like that. Let's have a wing like this, okay? And this wing itself will have a negative moment, CM0, for the wing. Why not have that little wing at the front and have that? So that, let's say, if the CG is here, I don't know for this airplane, but if the CG is here, so that this plus this will still give you that positive CM0 when V infinity is here and alpha is equal to zero. Can you do that? So your airplane would look like this? Yes. Yeah. Of the wing, yeah. So it is not really desired to have something in front of the wing because the wing needs clear airflow so that it can create nicely lift. That's absolutely correct. But let's say I make this far enough. Let's make this, I make this far enough in the front. Wouldn't that be a solution to my stability problem? I mean, just from the stability point of view. It would, right? It, it's, it doesn't matter. I mean, I just need that positive moment. So I could put this in the front. But as you said, there are other things that, that might not be not desirable, but it could very well be also in the front. And we call this a canard. This one would be a horizontal tail. Tail. And this one would be a canard. Okay? You could have it in the front. It's just that many airplanes don't have a canard because of this interaction, as you mentioned. And here you have to be also careful that the wake that's coming from the wing is not disturbing the horizontal tail because if this is now disturbing the horizontal tail, yes, you have lift, but you don't have stability. You see what, what I'm trying to say? So what I'm basically saying is that you will have an airplane you will have a wing and you will have a horizontal tail. And let's say this is your CG. The wing itself will give you a negative CM0 at, at zero alpha. So at, at alpha is equal to zero, 
The wing itself will give you this. But the horizontal tail might give you that. At alpha equals zero. And this is what we want. Because you might have a force like that. Or else you could actually do this. You could actually have an airplane that looks like that. Have the wing over here and put a canard in the front. Okay. And look at alpha equals zero. All right. In that case, you know, the wing itself is giving you a negative moment. However, with the canard, now the canard, the direction of the force must be, of course, up, and then you get still a CM0. This would be a canard, this would be a horizontal tail. But of course, the idea is that you need to make sure, in order for this to work, they have to have clear airflow, which means if the airflow that's coming from the canard, if that would disturb the wing at the back, that would be a problem, right? So, and you need lift to fly. But at the same time, if the wing's flow would disturb this horizontal tail, so that would be bad too. Now, then, then you, you lose this force here at the back, and CM0 is not positive anymore, and you use, lose stability. Okay. So, in other words, for this, you have to be careful. The wing is like this. And let's say this is your horizontal tail. Okay? And the airflow comes nicely on that wing and then, you know, slowly bends a little bit down. And now you have to be careful that this is not hitting the horizontal tail. Because if it hits the horizontal tail, you know, this is what we call the downwash. If it hits the tail from the top, so if it's bending down and going, coming down from the top, you suddenly have a net airflow coming from the top. And this will reduce the angle of attack on this thing. Okay? So is it good, bad? Well, these are all discussions we can make later. But I'm just saying that the interaction between these two has, is something that we need to look at. Okay, so the best thing, of course, is that you have a really slender airplane. And your wings in the front, and you have this in the back, and they have no interaction at all. Right? That would be the best. Okay, so every airplane has a canard or a, or a horizontal tail. Now, what did the Wright brothers have? Did they have this? or this, or maybe this. What did they have? You remember the pictures? They had this. They had something in the front. Okay? Wanna look at those pictures? Wanna look at these pictures? Let's do it during the after the break. Um, so I have to set up my laptop. Let's continue right now, but I'm going to show you the pictures that the Wright brothers did. So, we all agree that we need something like that. We need a horizontal. So most airplanes today, of course, have a horizontal tail. And the horizontal tail has to not to be in the wake of that thing. So, a lot of airplanes, you know, they look like this. I don't know if you, if you notice, look from the top. You know, this is the wing, and then, and then you look at airplanes, they have the, horizontal, the vertical tail, and the horizontal tail is somewhat up here. You see, if you look from the front. The reason is that is this, if you have the downwash from the wing, the air will go down, and this one still has clear air. You see, so it's a little bit at the top. You might have also seen these airplanes where... It's a T-tail. The horizontal tail is all really at the top, so that there, there's absolutely no interaction at all. 
you see. You might have seen some other airplanes that were, let's say if this is the air, if this is the wing, and this is your horizontal tail, and the, and the horizontal tails are kind of like that. Okay, they're kind of down there. So that they're not in that airflow, but it's, this is kind of dangerous, of course. You have to be careful so that you don't hit too much with the downwash. So a lot of passenger airplanes, you will see this kind of configuration so that you don't have that. Okay. Um, I think it's a good time to look at uh, airplane pictures, really. Um, let's do our break now, okay, and the next hour will be a little longer. Please come back in, um, in 10 minutes exactly, so which means uh, 11.35, okay? And meanwhile, I'll set up my computer, all right?